So I have the fulcrum is going to be at the 50 centimeter mark, and then I will put a kilogram here. So 9.8 newtons of force is required over there to lift it, and then I'm going to lift it over at this end. I'm going to put the input force here, also 40 centimeters away from the fulcrum. And what will the scale read as I try to lift the mass? 9.8. So it reads 9.8. Okay, and that's because the effort arm, which is from the fulcrum to the input force, effort force is, for, is the same as the fulcrum to the resistance force. Now, if I wanted to make things easier, right, I would shift my fulcrum and I would change the ratio between the effort and the resistance arm. But I'm going to leave the fulcrum there. And, well, now let me do this. I'll move the fulcrum. I'll leave these things where they are. So where would I move it if I wanted to make my work easier? Jeff? Closer to the line. Closer to what? To the there, right? I want to increase my effort arm and decrease my resistance arm. So let me do that. There, let's say. Now it reads much less, right? What does it read now? Four? Okay. Right? And remember, we're getting a greater distance here. Small force, small distance, more force. Okay, so that, that's the, again, trade-off with the machines. But that's how it worked. If I would move it to here, then it would require, right, more force to move less force. Okay. Another example of that. <coughs> Let's say that I have a paint can. Right, so it's a can of paint, and you know that there's a lid on there that you got to pry off. So I can use, they make a tool for it, or you can just use a screwdriver. Right, okay, so here's your screwdriver. Where's my fulcrum? To the lip of the can. Right, right here. Here's my fulcrum. And then I push down over here. So I put a little bit of force here, effort force, and I go through a big distance. And then out of here I get a big force, <coughs> resistance force, but I only need to move it a little bit. Right? So that's your a screwdriver being used as a first class lever. Okay, so now I got my fulcrum here on one end. I'm going to take the load again, put it in the center, in the middle between the fulcrum and the effort, and now my effort's over here. And should my scale read more or less than 9.8? <coughs> huh? Yeah, less. Less, right? Bigger distance here than here. So less force, more force. Okay, if I want to make it even easier, all right, I can move my load in there. Try that. Right. Now what does it read? Less? Three. 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 If I moved it all the way out to here, right to here, it would read 9.8. Right? Because then the effort arm and the resistance arm would be equal. As such now, it's resistance arm is from here to here. Or I'm sorry, effort arm. Resistance arm is right here. So you see there's a big IMA there. Okay. And then Alex pointed out wheelbarrow, right? Like the prime example. So you're working in your garden, you load it up, and then you go. Right? Your wheel's out here, got your load, and you're moving it. Okay, so that would be an example of a second class lever. lever, again, you're going to have your fulcrum on the end, but now you switch your load and your effort.
so it's actually going to be more than 9.8. What does it read? 13, right? If I move it in even more, it would read even more. If I bring it out here, it would be in third class lever. Right? How does this work? Where's my fulcrum? My wrist becomes the fulcrum. My effort is my hands. The load is out here where the ball is going to be, right? So what am I gaining? I want bat speed, right? When I'm hitting a baseball, I want bat speed. So remember, the whole bat has to move as one. So the, the outer edge of the circle has to be moving faster than the inner edge. So I'm gaining speed by doing that, right? A broom is another example, right? If I'm using a broom, it'd be much easier to sweep this way, right? I'm gaining distance as I'm sweeping. So that third class lever. Right, so that's that's the idea. When you're using a pencil, you're actually using a third class lever. Right? Here is the fulcrum, here is the effort, and the load is out here on the paper. It's a third class lever. Snow shovel. Right? You're at, that's tough because you're actually lifting snow with a third class lever. It's, it makes it really hard. Hard to do, right? That's why it's back breaking. Because it's so heavy. It's way out here. I'll turn a little bit so you guys can see. So what I have is Big, uh, there's, so there's a big circumference wheel here, and then a bunch of different sizes. I have a string attached to the very small wheel on the inside, attached to a kilogram, so we have a thousand grams there. And then attached to the outer wheel, with a string wrapped around it, I have 150 grams. So 150, 1,000. And I'm just going to add 20 more to the outside here. So I'm going to put, so I have 170 grams here, and I'll be able to move that. Right? Because, because of the trade and distance. And this is a type of lever, basically, right? It's called a wheel and axle. But remember, levers trade distance for force. So because the outside is going such a large distance, you only need a little bit of force. And a, a big, a small distance gives you a big force here. And my weight fell off, so it stopped. So that's uh, the way a wheel and axle works. And, and notice the other thing. Notice how far, uh, well, forget that. But notice how far <laughs> this end moved compared to this end. We didn't get very, very much movement, right? So that's your trade-off. Um, other examples? Anybody think of any? Bicycle. Bicycle, right? You get, think about your pedals, right? Your pedals go through this large distance. Right, if here's your bike, here's your, your uh, chain ring, and then you got your pedal, right? And so you pedal around a very large distance, and then your chain ring moves. So there's small force, big distance, large force, little distance, and then you go back here, and then you have all these gears, right? So it's a compound machine, because then on this end you have different chain, chain rings, different gears. But it's all wheel and axles, right? Yeah.